Hello everybody, welcome to the JavaScript course. In this video, I'm going to talk about the if-else statement of JavaScript. First, I will introduce the if statement. Then I will see how to add the if-else statement into JavaScript. I'm also going to discuss the shorthand form of the if-else statement. Finally, I'm going to discuss the if-else if statement. Okay, let us see the HTML file first. The HTML file has just a title and a heading. And I'm going to link the HTML file to a JavaScript file, which is inside the JS folder. And the file name is called myscript.js. And the JS folder is at the same level of the HTML file. Okay. So it is able to load the content of the JavaScript uh, on this web page. Now let me go to the JavaScript file. Okay. This is the JavaScript file. If I want to use the strict mode, I just say use strict at the very beginning of the JavaScript file. And then I'm going to add some if statements. The first one is like this one. Now I want to set up a prompt and then I'm going to accept a value from the prompt. And the default value is simply zero. Okay, I want to do some comparison of the value obtained from the prompt. If the input value is larger than zero, I'm going to show two alert windows. The first one is simply saying that the value is larger than zero, and the second one is that I'm going to print out the input value obtained when the value is larger than zero. And the format is like this one. Because I want to include the input value, I need a backtick at the beginning of the uh, alert statement and at the end of the alert statement. And I want to surround the input value with a pair of curly brackets. And before that, I have to include the dollar sign so that the input value obtained from the prompt can be shown on the alert window. Okay, so let me see the result by saving it first. Save, reload. Yes, I have to input a number. If I say it is positive 6, I press OK. I will get the first alert window saying that the value is larger than 0. And I'm going to get another alert window saying that the value of obtained was 6. So this value of 6 was obtained by the input value indicated by the prompt window. Okay. So let me run it again. If the value is minus 5, what, what will happen? I don't have anything to output because the if statement just mentions the situation when the input value is larger than zero. It doesn't tell the browser to do anything when the input value is not larger than zero. For example, when I give a negative value, nothing will be executed, including this part, of course. And I'm going to show you another example that involves an if else statement. Now I have a prompt window to accept an input. The default value is zero. Okay, I have an else part shown here. So that when the condition here isn't satisfied, I'm going to do something else. Okay, so I have to mention something here. We have to include the condition to test with a pair of round brackets, okay? So that um, the expression is located inside a pair of round brackets. And we have to put the thing to do with a pair of curly brackets if the condition is satisfied. Same for the else part. If the else condition is satisfied, we have to do something that is included in the pair of curly brackets. So that's this the uh, general idea of ha using the if statement he shown here and the if else statement shown here. So let me run it by saving it first. Save, reload. Yes, I have to input a number. For example, now I include 12 as the answer. Okay. 
we can see that the value is not larger than 20. It just tells me that the else part is executed. Okay, so I'm going to do this part. Why? Because 12 isn't larger than 20. So the first condition here fails. In this case, I'm going to do something else if this condition isn't satisfied. So let me run the example again. For example, I put 60. Now 60 is larger than 20, so the if condition is satisfied, then I'm going to do the alert window shown here. Okay, The value is larger than 20. When I press OK, I'm not going to do the else part because this part isn't really satisfied by the value of A. Okay, So that is the if else statement. For a simple if else statement, we can use a shorthand form as follows. Okay, if I want to do the if else statement compactly, we can have such an idea. If I want to say if 5 is larger than 3, if it is true, we say true, else we say false. So if we want to compress this if else statement to just one line, we can have such an idea. We simply say that is larger to be this value coming from this long expression. Okay. If I want to see whether 5 is larger than 3, I can have such an idea. If it is true, the value of is larger returns true. Otherwise, the is larger value becomes false. So this long statement is equal to these several lines of statements. Okay. So when I want to see the result, I can simply print it out using the alert window. Save, reload. Yes, I will get true because 5 is actually larger than 3. So the is larger variable will contain the value of true. Okay. So this is a way of doing the shorthand form of if else statement. So when your if else statement is as simple as that kind of situation, you can use just one line to do a few lines shown above, okay. But it is not suggested to do something pretty complicated by using this kind of shorthand form because the readability is reduced. And the shorthand form is best suited for this kind of value assignment. So when the value is true, I put it to the variable is, is larger. If it, it is false, I put it to the is larger variable, okay. So for this kind of simple variable assignment, we can use this kind of shorthand form pretty easily. Okay, how about the next part? It is called the else and else if statement. So we can have more than one uh, route to go if the condition isn't satisfied at the beginning. Let us see an example. So B is going to become a value obtained by the prompt window. If B is smaller than zero, I can have some alert window to show up. If B is negative, I just say that the value is smaller than zero. But what would happen if the value of B isn't smaller than zero? I have so many solutions to show up. The first case is like this one. If the value of b is larger than or equal to 0, and at the same time it is smaller than 10, I just say that the value is between 0 and 9. But of course, the situation can be even more complicated. How about the situation when it is larger than 10? I have another route to go. If the value is larger than or equal to 10, but it is smaller than 20, I can say that the value is simply between 10 and 19. And how about other situations? If the value is 20 or even larger? I 
I just say that the failure is 20 or larger. If all these three conditions are not satisfied, okay, if B is negative, or if B is between 0 and 9, or if the failure of B is between 10 and 19, okay. So if these three conditions are not yet satisfied, I'm going to do the else part. So you, you can see that I'm going to join so many branches by using the else if statement, okay. If this part fails, I'm going to test whether the second branch is satisfied. If the second branch isn't yet satisfied, I'm going to check the th third branch. If the third branch isn't yet satisfied, I'm going to check the final part, which is called the else part. Okay. So let me see the effect by running the page. Save. Reload. Yes, I want an in integer. Say minus three. The value is smaller than zero because I'm going to execute the first branch, which is this one. Okay. So let me try another value, for example, eight. I'm going to really execute this one because the value is really between zero and nine. And other branches are not executed because only this one is satisfied. How about this time I say 15? I will get this branch because the value is actually between 10 and 19. How about this time? If the value is 42, what will happen? I will say that the value is 20 or larger. So I'm going to do the else part if um, the value is larger than 20 because all the previous three branches are not yet satisfied. So that is just the basic idea of the else and else if statement. So this video has already talked about so many types of if-else statements. The pure one, or the if-else statement, together with its shorthand form for simple variable assignment. Also, I've discussed the way to do the else if statements by uh, setting up more branches for the conditions to go. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, Please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.